Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning just thankful, thankful for everything that you do for us, thankful for your love, your patience, your wisdom, and we ask that you continue to bestow that on us throughout this season. And please, please let everybody understand that no matter what happens in the coming days, weeks, and months, everything is under your control. You are the one true king, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Um, and under you, we will prosper. I ask that you be with the families today who are grieving on All Saints Day. Help them with their grief, but, but also fill them with joy, knowing that their loved ones are, are now in a place much better than we could ever imagine. And I ask that you, you be with those who are on our, our, our needs list um, and be with those who could not be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, children, you, you can, uh, you're set free. I <laughs> uh, didn't mean to, to hold you any longer than you have to. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I'm Seth Johns. I'm the pastor of student ministries and visitation here at Prince Street Church. Um, today, uh, as you can see, our, our scripture is going to be 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17. We're uh, going to be looking at being equipped but before we do that, let's just go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today. We just ask for open hearts, open minds, and that, that we hear the words from, from the Bible, which is your words, God. Uh, just speak to each one of us, uh, speak to myself, and uh, help us to, to take this information from your word and apply it to our lives and also... Uh, take it to others around us as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So being a, equipped, um, I've learned a, a few things in the short time that, that I've been married about being equipped. Well, let me tell you about, about camping. Um, so prior to being married, you know what camping and being, being equipped for camping meant for me is you know, some hot dogs, some buns, uh, just a few things, you know, I don't know if you call them, are they called camper pies or mountain pies or both depending on where you're at? Well, those things are part of my list, a sleeping bag, a tent, and I, you know, for me being equipped for camping always kind of meant, you know, the bare minimum. Um, I don't know if anyone's had the opportunity of camping on the Susquehanna Islands, uh, they're pretty fun to, to camp on uh, completely free, and they have like little lock boxes where you can read stories from the previous campers. Um, so that's always fun, but I got to go out there and do that, and, but for the longest time, my, my list for being equipped for camping, you know, was the tent and all that, and I had an opportunity when I was in college that uh, I got to go for one of my classes. It was a leadership class. Uh, we went out in the wilderness in Canada, we canoed to different islands. We were at a different island each night. We were out there for about a week. 
and everything that we carried, everything that we, that we wanted to take, we had to carry on our backs, as well as the canoes when, we, when there wasn't a spot to, to send them through the water. We had to take them over the, the little islands, too, to get to where we were going. So everything that we needed had to fit in our bags. So when we were thinking about being equipped, we had to be very specific. So I'm coming in, uh, I, I'm, I get married, and you know, we, our first time talking about camping, I realized that my list of being equipped for camping is a whole lot different than the list that Emily might have when she goes camping. You see, if she had her preference, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be a tent. You know, it would be maybe a camper. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's maybe camping with uh, some of the family that might have a camper. Or, and when we talk about meals, you know, when I, when I pack for camping, I don't think about side dishes at all. That never passes my mind. Well, side dishes become a thing. <laughs> and then I learned even something even more uh, with Kinsley coming along, being equipped for a camping trip with a young, you know, a, a young little person, you know, that, that brings its own challenges too. So you have all these different things that come along with being equipped uh, for camping. And today we're going to be looking at uh, the word equipped and, and being equipped for every good work. Um, so that's where we're going to be at today. Just a little bit of background, uh, right before uh, 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17, uh, we have Paul writing his letter to Timothy, and this is, um, this is going to be, Paul knows that, that his time is, is kind of ticking down. He's back in prison again, and, and he knows that the end of this prison sentence most likely isn't him uh, walking out free. So he's, he's writing this letter, and it's, he has a lot of final urges to Timothy in this letter, and here, right before we get to where we're at, in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, Paul's telling Timothy, you're going to be seeing these people. He said they're going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, um, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And he keeps going on, and he goes a little bit more. And what's eye-opening is that when he was telling him about this, you know, as I've done even more research on this scripture, he's actually talking about people within the church. And he's saying, watch out, Timothy, because this is going to be happening, this is going to be coming into the church, and you're going to have to be watching out for that. So here, you know, what my Bible calls the final charge to Timothy is 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17. So let's read that together this morning. It says, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings, what kinds of things have happened to me in Antioch, uh, I, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse. So that's what he was talking about kind of there before. Uh, the evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned, and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you've learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So there you get the hint of where we get equipped, being equipped for every good work, and that seems to be the, the purpose of this final charge that he's giving Timothy here uh, in his message. But let's walk through, we're going to walk through this, this little passage here uh, and kind of work down through it, and we'll get to being equipped. Let me see if I can get this cruise in. There we are. 
So verse 12, he's talking about how all believers are going to be facing persecution. Persecution. Uh, he went, I think it's in 2 Corinthians where, where Paul lists off all the different things that he's gone through. You know, he had, uh, he'd had the, the 40 lashes minus one. He had had, he'd gone to prison multiple times. He, they attempted to stone him. Well, they stoned him and left him for dead, but yet he made it through that. Uh, and so much more, he, he goes through this whole list. But what he's telling Timothy is that no matter what happened to me, God's brought me through them. And he says, in fact, all believers are going to be persecuted. And he goes on and says the evildoers uh, will deceive others and will, be de- and will be deceived. And we kind of looked at this a little bit last week, you know, that, that idea of, of something similar to that where we were talking about the teachers of law and the Pharisees where he said, they're going to be turning, they're going to be closing the doors of heaven for themselves and also other people because they're receiving these things. They're being deceived themselves and with that information, they're also deceiving others. And he continues on and says, continue what you have learned. And he's telling Timothy that. And what I, one of the studies I was reading about this, uh, it stood out to me and I'd never noticed this before, but I thought it was really cool. And I, I don't know if you guys will think it's cool, but Timothy was the first second generation believer after christ had been on earth and and had died and been resurrected again so timothy had learned about jesus from his parents who were believers so he was the first generation of that happening which i was like that's pretty cool i was i i mean i never thought about that before and i i i don't know i never focused on that before but that i thought was really cool but we see that in paul saying take what you've learned from infancy you know, you've been taught the Holy Scriptures, you know the people that have taught you this, uh, and, and use that to help be, um, he says, to make you wise for the salvation through faith of Christ Jesus. So he continues on, and we see this part, all Scripture is God-breathed, so that means that all Scripture was inspired by God, it's from God, and that's a powerful thing to keep in mind. And I talked last week, and this is going to be another challenge kind of this week as well, is picking back up memorizing scripture. Because like I said last week, I think my generation, you know, we, that was kind of thrown out the window. It was, you always have it on your phone. You can always get it on your computer. You can find it pretty much anywhere you're at. But what I love about this scripture is that it's a good reminder. And it's good, you know, when we start to question God's word, when we, when we start to not feel like, you know, when we're asking the question, God, why is this happening? And we're trying to find answers it can be a good reminder that all Scripture is God-breathed. And it's a good reminder to have when we're praying and we're asking God and we're saying, God, I need something, and we're looking for His direction, and we have to remember that a lot of the time God can give direction through His Word, which is Scripture. So I just love this part of the verse where it says, all Scripture is God-breathed. But then it goes on, it says it's profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so teaching means that we can get instruction from it and that we can you know instruct others rebuking means it can kind of it can tell us you know something here is not right (laughs) something's here maybe that's we're listening to someone speak maybe that's you know we're looking at something that we're doing in our own lives and we, we can see looking at scripture you know scripture can say that's not right but then rebuking is also followed up right by right with correcting so it's not just this is what's wrong but it's also saying instead this is the truth so it not only rebukes but it corrects which is really good (laughs) it's good that it doesn't just say what not to do but it also tells us what to do instead and what we can do is we can test what we're hearing we can test the things that we're doing in our lives by reading scripture and seeing, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but instead I need to be working on this. And also training in righteousness. And we've looked at this word recently, uh, at least in the, in the sermons that I've done with you guys, where I've brought God's word. And it looks like righteousness, when you break it down, look at scripture, righteousness is obedience to God. And what I did with my other sermon, if, if you weren't there for that, or if you don't remember that, we looked at Romans 6, where it talks about where Paul's telling the Roman believers when you choose to have faith in Jesus Christ and, and be a believer, 
what you're also choosing is that you're no longer slave to sin, you're no longer servant to sin or fleshly desires. Instead, you're now a servant to God and obedience to God. And we see that obedience to God leads to righteousness. Being righteous in God's sight. So here we have the purpose. 2 Timothy 3.17, the purpose of this, you know, this final charge that he gives t- Timothy, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And there we see it again, talking about being a servant of God instead of being a servant of sin. You know, the purpose of this is so that the servant of God can be equipped for every good work. So I was telling the students uh, Within the past month, in, uh, for one of the lessons in youth group, I told them that, that, I was a, that I was a piece of pizza. And I explained to them, you know, we all heard you are what you eat. You know, and, and that's, that's true to a certain point. And when we think about, you know, the truth of that statement, what that is actually saying is, you know, what you're putting in what you're taking in is what you're going to be able to put out. And it talks about, you know, what this passage is saying is that, you know, Scripture, it's all inspired by God, profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And it says that way you can be thoroughly equipped to do every good work. So to be equipped, we need to be intaking, we need to be studying, we need to be memorizing Scripture. We, that needs to be our pizza for my case. I actually, last night, this wasn't planned. Uh, well, the pizza in my sermon was planned, but what happened last night wasn't planned. I ended up getting pizza. <laughs> and I ate the pizza. That's why I'm up here. I'm a I'm slice of pizza talking to you guys today. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about pepperoni bringing you the, the lesson today, but uh, that's what's going on. Um, but we need to make sure that that what we're putting into our bodies, you know, what, what we're putting into our hearts, our minds, and our souls is God's word. It's, it's inspired by God. That way, when we're outputting, when we're sharing with others, when we're deciding the decisions of how we're going to live our life, those will be decided by that. And we don't want to, again, last week, our warning was that we don't fall in the same trap as the Pharisees and the teachers of law, which this seems very similar because he says, right here, that some people are going to be deceived and they're going to deceive others. And that's why I think he's bringing out how Scripture can test what we're hearing. Scripture can guide us when we hear those things, and we should be taking, and no matter who it is speaking, no matter, you know, where we hear it from, we should be taking it and looking at Scripture and seeing if it lines up. Because that's how we can tell, and that's the charge here he's saying, You need to watch out because some people, they're going to seem good. They're going to seem like they're on the right track, but we need to be testing it against Scripture because Scripture is God-breathed. Scripture is inspired by God, and it's useful for those reasons. So he was telling Timothy that um, for that reason. He had the false teachers that he was thinking of so that Timothy can learn to, to walk in the right direction, just like we're called to obey God and follow God in the right direction. That way, we can be kept on track. Well, I just want to share something with you guys, and have you guys heard um, what the, what the best, you guys heard about windows? (laughs) You know what the best kind of window is, or what they say the best kind of window is? The transparent kind, the kind you can see through. Otherwise, what's the point of it? Is it just a door or is it a wall? So the best kind of window is a transparent one, and, and I want you guys to see God through Scripture today, so I want to try to be transparent with you guys today. You know, this week, the past two weeks when I was preparing my sermon, as I was reading through Scripture, I went through the process of praying to God, and I said, God, I'm not sure what you want me to do uh, for this coming sermon And I just kept praying and and reading my Bible. And what I would do is I just kept reading through Scripture and Scripture and Scripture. And at some point the past two weeks, something just stood out and it said, you know, I felt God was saying, this is where you're supposed to be. 
And this week, I started that same process, and it, it felt like I kept reading Scripture, but for some reason, I wasn't falling on something. So I didn't feel, you know, the Holy Spirit tugging my heart saying, this is the passage, this is the passage. So I kept reading, I kept reading, and the week kept going by and going by, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do? And I, I went to Emily, and I said, it's like halfway through the week, and I'm like, I don't, I explained to her that process, how the past two weeks I felt something stood out. And I said, this week, I, I don't know. And, and Emily said something to me, and, and it started setting me on the right track. She said, well, can't, can't you just pick part of the Bible? And at first I was kind of thinking, well, you know, I didn't say this, but at first my thoughts were, well, it's not that easy, you know? You gotta, you know, I'm going through the whole process and all that. But then I started thinking, and, and this, this verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.16, all, all scriptures God breathed and profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training righteousness. When I was in college, one of my professors made us memorize the scripture. And when she said that, after that first excuse popped in my mind, this scripture popped in my mind. And I, and I stepped back, and I thought about the scripture in, an, in a whole new way with extra emphasis on the all scripture. Because for the longest time, I was focused on how it was just, just kind of the aspect of it being inspired by God and how it was profitable for those reasons. But I forgot, and I didn't put as much weight on all Scripture for some reason. And this week, you know, that came to me, that, that all Scripture. And I decided, well, then it doesn't really matter what Scripture I pick for today, but I chose this Scripture because I felt, you know, if I learn from it, maybe we can all learn from it. <laughs> um. But all scripture is God-breathed, profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that we can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And it kind of goes along hand in hand, which before I really started focusing on the meaning of this passage and I, and I decided this is where I was going to be this week, I didn't realize how well it lined up with kind of the past two weeks and what we've been talking about, talking about righteousness, talking about being equipped, looking out for false teachers and comparing that to the word. Um, but that's where we're at today, and I wanted you guys to know that, you know, we don't always have it together. Sometimes we can be praying and we can be reading and, you know, sometimes God delivers through his word. Sometimes God speaks through other people and even as I saw this week, sometimes he works through what we have memorized too. Um, so I just want to share that with you guys. Um, just the, got the challenge for today, possibly. Our challenge is just like the charge that Paul had to Timothy uh, to be equipped, be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And it goes hand in hand with, with what we've been talking about, making sure that we don't fall in the same trap that the Pharisees and teachers of the law were, where they were deceived and, and they taught the deception that they, they had learned. Making sure that we, that we're mi combining faith and works and Working out both those muscles, build up our, our righteousness muscles, I think is what we talked about. And all those things combined with the reading of Scripture, we can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Whatever God throws at us, no matter how hard it is, Paul warns us and Paul lived it, there's going to be persecutions. There's going to be hardships. But if we're doing these things, we can be thoroughly equipped. For no matter what's thrown at us just the application for today use scripture to teach rebuke correct and train in righteousness so that's first you know hearing teaching spreading what we're learning reading god's word using it to to test what we're hearing of god's word using it to test what we're doing in our lives and by testing it, 
that's going to be rebuking it and correcting those things that we've heard. And maybe there isn't something to be rebuked that day that we're, that from what we've heard. Maybe there is. But then using it to train in righteousness. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you today and we just take the words that you give us, that all scripture is, is your words, God. It's from you. It's inspired from you, God, and that is profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that we might be equipped for every good work. God, we pray that we take this seriously. We pray that we're reading our scripture, that we're studying our scripture, that we're praying for understanding of the difficult parts of scripture that we don't understand and, and continue to read and study that. God, we pray that we can be thoroughly equipped for no matter what you throw at us, no matter where you have us, God, no matter if it's in this community, or if you move us to a different community, if you move us to a different country, God, just help us be thoroughly equipped for everything that you have in store. We know you have different plans for each one of us, but we know one thing remains, that we need to be thoroughly equipped, that we need to be reading your scripture and basing what we do off of that. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.